Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time There are growing concerns tonight about Iran's place among potential U.S. economic and in some cases military competitors. It's being courted to join a consortium of nations pushing back against American influence. Chief National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin is at the Pentagon tonight. New revelations have emerged about Iran cooperating to expand Russia's drone program that aims to change the course of modern warfare with new kamikaze drones that can fly 1,000 miles. Iran is one of six countries invited to become a member of BRICS, joining Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa in this economic and geopolitical alternative to the G7. Iran foreshadowed plans to destroy the U.S. dollar. The Islamic Republic of Iran strongly supports BRICS efforts aimed at de-dollarization of economic relations between members and using national currencies and boosting BRICS mechanisms for payments and financial settlements. Meanwhile, a new unclassified intelligence report from the U.S. military's Defense Intelligence Agency has alarming statistics about Iranian UAV drones being used by Russia in Ukraine. Iran has helped Russia by sending hundreds of Shahid kamikaze drones for use by the Russian military in Ukraine. One side-by-side -side image shows a Shahid 131 drone recovered in Ukraine, identical to engines recovered from a September 2022 Iranian-claimed attack in Iraq targeting U.S. forces. DIA's drone display proves that while these UAVs were recovered thousands of miles apart, they share a common point of origin. Iran. The Washington Post recently received leaked intelligence showing a sprawling new drone factory in the Russian Republic of Tatarstan, where Iran plans to begin building 6,000 drones by the summer of 2025. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17 and Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. Isaiah 17, 1 and 14, the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and it will be a ruinous heap. Then behold, at eventide, trouble, and before the morning he is no more. This is the portion of those who plunder us, and the lot of those who rob us. Isaiah 17.9 In that day his strong cities will be as a forsaken bow and an uppermost branch, which they left because of the children of Israel, and there will be desolation. Isaiah 17.1 and 14 tell us Damascus will be destroyed in a single night. Verse 9 suggests it is the children of Israel who caused this desolation, possibly with a nuclear weapon. Is there any evidence of Isaiah 17.1 happening anytime soon? In breaking news, Aleppo International Airport in Syria was shut down by alleged Israeli airstrikes. Operations suspended and runway damaged. Recent assault escalates tensions following similar Damascus attack. And Syrian Defense Minister claims Israeli missiles hit Russian army sites. Aleppo International Airport in Syria has suffered significant damage following what the Syrian Defense Ministry is describing as Israeli air aggression. According to a military source, the airport was targeted in an air attack, resulting in substantial damage to its runway and rendering it non-functional. 
The alleged incident occurred at 4.30 a.m., as reported by a Syrian state outlet, Sana. These strikes had led a suspension of operations at the airport, with its sole runway being closed for activity. The Syrian Civil Aviation Authority informed pilots of closure, attributing it to the runway maintenance work. This event follows closely on the heels of a similar accusation level against Israel by Syria. Just last week, an attack in Damascus area was claimed by Syria, with explosions that echoed throughout the capital city. The Syrian Ministry of Defense reported that the assault originated from the direction of the Golan Heights and resulted in an injury to a Syrian soldier. Moreover, the Syrian Center for Monitoring Human Rights, based in London, disclosed that two individuals lost their lives in the attack and that the Israeli missiles impacted several sites connected to the Russian army. Escalating aggression by Hezbollah may soon lead to war with Israel. The terrorist group has been building up its weapons and releasing videos showing possible military attacks. CBN's Chris Mitchell takes us to Israel's northern border, where people fear that after 17 years of relative peace, war could break out at any moment. Behind me is a spectacular view of southern Lebanon. After the 2006 Second Lebanon War, Hezbollah has been rearming and now has as many as 200,000 rockets on the other side of the border. CBN News joined former IDF colonel and national security advisor Kobe Marom on a tour along the border. We saw an amazing rearming process from Iran through Damascus to the Hezbollah infrastructure. And we decided to not respond, decided to have a restraint policy. That's the reason why the major threat against the Israeli people today, 2023, 200,000 rockets and missiles across the border right here that can target today Tel Aviv and other Israelis. That's the major threat for Israel. That arsenal serves as a deterrent to keep Israel from attacking Iran's nuclear facilities. And Moron believes the regime has given Hezbollah a green light to turn up the heat. Uh, the Iranians have a high, high self-confidence, many diplomatic achievements lately across the Middle East. They understand that they can put a lot of pressure on the Israeli government and the IDF if they will succeed with the Hezbollah to uh, create an attrition war along this border right here. This wall serves as one of Israel's responses. They're really concerned about the fact that Israel is going to build a wall, an obstacle along the 70 miles of the Lebanese border because their wall plan is to occupy neighborhoods from the Israeli communities along the border and, and, and actually and disrupt totally the Israeli war plans. Behind me is a closed military zone, and up on the hillside are the tents set up by Hezbollah for the last several weeks inside Israeli territory, the latest provocative act by the Iranian-backed terror group. The question now is will Israel destroy the tents or allow them to remain? In the meantime, Hezbollah is pushing the envelope. Propaganda videos are rampant, ranging from this simulation of an attack on an IDF outpost to intimidating military exercises. And this footage shows Hezbollah special forces patrolling the border fence in violation of the UN resolution that ended the last war. Marom also sees Hezbollah taking advantage of Israel's internal division. They look to the tough struggle inside the Israeli society as a great opportunity to create challenges to the Israeli government, to the Israeli people. Marom also fears what could potentially result from the combination of the terrorist bravado and this precarious situation. Is it possible that we face a war uh, between Israel and, and, and Hezbollah in the near future? Yes, it's possible, with a miscalculation of one of the, of the sides. Well, joining us now is Chris Mitchell. He's fresh from the uh, northern border of Israel. So, mm -hmm. Chris, tell us, well, what are your impressions? How close are we to a potential war? Could happen at any time, uh, uh, Gordon. Uh, my impressions up there on the northern border, what you see it's beautiful, it's quiet, but beneath the quiet and the beauty is really uh, one of the major threats to Israel right now. There's about 150 to 200,000 rockets and missiles there in South Lebanon aimed at Israel. And not only the number, but they also have precision-guided missiles that could hit military sites, key infrastructure. And Hezbollah basically is a state within a state right now and one of the most powerful armies in the Middle East. As we continue to watch Bible prophecy unfold, it seems as though the war of Gog and Magog is looming on the horizon. Ezekiel 38, 1 through 9. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. 
and I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great host, all of them with buckler and shield, wielding swords. Persia, Cush, and Put are with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his hordes, Bethgarma from the uttermost parts of the north with all his hordes, many peoples are with you. Be ready and keep ready, you and all your hosts that are assembled about you, and be a guard for them. After many days you will be mustered. In the latter years you will go against the land that is restored from war, the land whose people were gathered from many peoples upon the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. Its people were brought out from the peoples and now dwell securely, all of them. You will advance, coming on like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land, you and all your hordes, and many peoples with you. These are the modern day nations in Ezekiel 38 and 39 that many people believe will be mustered in the latter years to attack Israel. Russia, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and Ethiopia. God tells us exactly what will happen to Iran, Russia, Turkey, and the many peoples with you when they attack Israel in Ezekiel 38, 18 through 23, and 39 to 7 and 8. And it will come to pass at the same time when God comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God that my fury will show in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath I have spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him into judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. And I will turn thee back, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name any more. Then the nation shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Surely it is coming, and it shall be done, says the Lord God. This is the day of which I have spoken. I've been informed by top-ranking military officials that Israel has been unable to launch even a single plane in defense. As I stand here, Fighter planes are exploding in midair. They're crashing and falling to the ground without any explanation. And while no one can seem to give me any reason for why this is happening, I can tell you this. This all-out, unprecedented attempt to destroy Israel appears to be failing. God is the one who fights this battle for Israel. He does it for two reasons. To make his holy name known in the midst of his people Israel, that the nation shall know that he is the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. Zechariah 2, 8, and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, He sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them, and they shall become spoiled for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Israel is precious to Almighty God, the apple of his eye. He is simply saying, You touch my chosen nation Israel, you poke me in the eye. Is Vladimir Putin the infamous Gog of Magog that the prophet Ezekiel warned would come on the scene in the last days and lead a coalition of nations to destroy Israel? Or could Gog be Recep Tayyip Erdogan, another dictator who is fast gaining power and dominance in the Middle East? Biblical scholars can't agree if the prophet Ezekiel was talking about a last day's assault on Israel being led by Russia or Turkey. Many popular Bible teachers claim that Gog will come from Russia, while others claim that Ezekiel's prophecy actually points to Turkey. Whether Gog is from Russia or Turkey, both nations are presently being led by undisputed dictators who could each very easily fit the Gog profile. So most notably in Greece's Alexandropolis region, we are facing the largest wildfire uh, ever recorded um, in the EU. In the skies above the forested suburbs of northern Athens, the wildfires have been spreading for 11 days in a row. Search teams constantly on the lookout. The government says arsonists have been starting new fires here on Mount Parnitha, threatening lives and the whole national park. Countrywide firefighters are stretched to the limit. International help has been requested. 
But we go now to Louisiana, where four major wildfires are burning this morning, including what's being called the Tiger Island Fire, largest in state history after it more than doubled in size over the weekend. At least one person is dead in that state. Firefighters are racing to battle the rapidly spreading flames in northeastern Louisiana, where the Tiger Island Fire forced the 1,200 residents of Maryville to evacuate. It's moving pretty fast, and you can feel the air picking up. State fire officials on Sunday said the blaze has grown to 33,000 acres, up from an estimated 15,000 acres Friday. So far, the fire is only 50% contained, and the local sheriff said at least 20 buildings have gone up in flames. Nobody in our state has had to address a fire like this before. It's one of at least 441 fires that have burned across Louisiana this month. Unprecedented for a state that's used to dealing with hurricanes and floods. Not fires and drought. While we're pretty good in practice at emergency response, not so much on the wildfires. This is so scary to think that we could lose our homes. Monica Hickman evacuated her home last week to stay with her brother. She's since left his place, fearing the fire spread. Praying for rain, praying for help. It's not just for my homes, it's not just for my family, it's for my community. This has been a summer of extreme heat weather coverage. We begin with the extreme heat, and that extreme heat, relentless heat wave. To the extreme heat, an unbearable heat wave. We're told 2023 is on track to be the hottest year on record, while two-thirds of Americans in a PBS Marist poll now say climate change is affecting the weather. People are starting to realize that there is an effect. This definitely feels like like we're in that point of no return that people have talked about for a long time. The U.N. Secretary General has called for immediate action on climate change. Global warming has ended the era, the era of global boiling has arrived. Weather history, however, tells a different story, that the worst weather events, including the hottest year, have all been in the past. The worst hurricane in history? The Great Hurricane of 1780, which killed over 20,000 people in the Caribbean. The worst wildfire in U.S. history? The Peshtigo, Wisconsin fire in 1871, which killed at least 1,500 people and burned over a million acres. The worst flood in world history was in 1931. The Yangtze River flood in China, which killed almost 4 million people. The worst flood in U.S. history was in 1889 in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Deadliest tornado in recorded U.S. history was in 1925, the Tri-State Tornado, which struck Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, killing some 700 people. And the hottest year was in 1936. A heat wave in America and hundreds of thousands leave New York. In 1936, 21 states set their all-time temperature records. The 1930s were extremely hot. Uh, 1936 is the hottest year on record in the United States, and, and probably throughout the Northern Hemisphere. Some northern cities saw temperatures between 115 and 120 degrees. Many thousands died across the country, and the resulting Dust Bowl forced the migration of 3.5 million climate refugees out of the Great Plains and Midwest. There's little dispute the Earth has been warming incrementally since the extremely cold period known as Little Ice Age ended in 1850. But Weather Bell chief forecaster Joe Bistardi and other experts blame this summer's sweltering temperatures on a huge amount of water vapor created by an intense underwater volcanic eruption in Tonga last year. 1,000 times more powerful than the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima and also by warming oceans. Yeah, there's been an increase in what we call geothermal spreading since the uh, early 1990s. And what it does is it de develops a cumulative buildup of heat in the oceans, which then has to be released through the El Ninos, which then puts all sorts of water vapor in the air, which then leads to the warming that you're seeing. It's all water vapor. There have also been record cold temperatures this summer. But that weather news is ignored. You know, it's a very complicated issue that the alarm is just like, want to boil down to, um, you know, fossil fuel use is destroying the planet. You know, the whole climate is a lot more complicated. Summers in the U.S. are supposed to be hot, something even the Babylon Bee noticed. Satan, the great deceiver, often tries to front run God by giving people wrong ideas ahead of time about what is prophesied to happen. Satan has tricked mankind into believing that climate change is real 
and in turn has blinded many people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16:8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat. And they blaspheme the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Climate change is simply Satan's counter to Jesus' signs of his return and the end of the age. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Don't let Satan blind you to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The extreme weather the world has been witnessing is not climate change. It is God letting us know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is returning. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Good morning. I was actually asleep. It was four o'clock here in our resort in Uluwatu. And I, I woke to what was a little bit of rattling of the bed. And I thought, oh, this is cute. We're going through an earthquake. And then uh, within around 15, 20 seconds of room, the entire room started to shake quite strongly. We could hear that there was quite a few other hotel guests, obviously, running from their rooms. We uh, spoke to reception. They said, yes, this is quite a big earthquake, one of the biggest ones we've had in the last 12 months. The sun's only coming up. It's uh, almost six o'clock here at the moment. So we'll be able to work out of the next couple of hours whether there was any damage but pretty scary um, for yeah. all of the tourists here in Bali at the moment. Jesus speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age declares this in Matthew 24 12 and because lawlessness will be increased the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments as we read in 1 John 3 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. We turn to the horrific scene at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Today, the reports coming in of an armed and dangerous suspect, a massive law enforcement response, and tonight we have learned a faculty member is dead. Video obtained by our Raleigh station, WTVD, showing students waiting inside a locked lecture hall, sheltering in place. Authorities then clearing buildings one by one, leading students away from campus. Some of those students uh, very distraught and understandably so. Campus authorities issuing this photo of the suspected gunman. The university website lists him as a graduate student. What we've learned about him already, and here's ABC's Steve Osinsami now. Again in America, this time in North Carolina, police have arrested an accused gunman about a mile away from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Stage for law enforcement, possible active shoot on campus. Where police say the accused gunman shot and killed a university faculty member. Everyone was just panicking. People almost opened the door and they were told not to open the door. And then finally we got evacuated. We locked the doors pretty quickly and we were just kind of like hunkering down. Campus alerts went out just after 1 p.m. Eastern, telling students to shelter in place. Authorities quickly released this photo, saying if you see this person, keep your distance, put your safety first, and call 911. The same photo on the school's website says he's a grad student. 
Our ABC station WTVD shares this cell phone video of students taking cover on the floors of lecture halls. Frightened students recorded cell phone videos showing police clearing the building room by room. Parents with kids at a nearby grade school were in a panic. This was their first day of the school year and the entire school district was locked down for much of the day. My heart is in my mouth. I am waiting for my kid. It was his first day at school today. He's in kindergarten. And this was the last thing that I was kind of hoping to feel on the first day of my kid's school. Breaking news overnight. Four people shot during a high school football game in Oklahoma. ABC's Derek Dennis is here with the latest on that. Good morning to you, Derek. Good morning, Gio. Hard to imagine gunshots ringing out at Friday night football, but it happened in the middle of the country and everyone went running. What is going on? What's happening? I have no idea what's happening. Overnight, the terrifying moment a mass shooting broke out at an Oklahoma on? high school football game called on live stream. Oh, we've got people shooting. Oh my goodness, where? I don't know. Watch as chaos erupts on the field. Players running in all directions, some diving to the ground. People are down on the field. A couple of our officers off duty traveled over here with Dell City to work security for that side. All I can tell you at this point that a Dell City officer was involved in the shooting. Police say shots rang out at Choctaw High School around 10.30 p.m. Four people were shot, at least one of them a student who was treated for a gunshot wound to her thigh. There's four victims uh, with gunshots. One has been treated and released. The condition of the other three is unknown. We don't have any suspects in custody at this time. With the horrible school shootings taking place in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse as the time of Christ's return draws near? If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is, God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel v. Vital, The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District v. Shump, The removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready 
when he makes his personal appearance. My God! What if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.